Thank you very much. This is the academic slot, so I'm going to stand by the lectern and provide no entertainment at all. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you six points, and they are going to be pretty short. So it'll be over fairly soon. Number one, religion has changed dramatically since the late 80s. I put a date on it, I say 1989. One of the symptoms of that change is that for people over 50 in this country, Christian is the majority identity. But for those under 30, no religion is becoming the majority identity. No religion or none, not to be confused with N-U-N, okay, when I say nuns, it's N-O-N-E-S. So the rise of nuns. So what's going on? Point two, people who say no religion, the nuns, are not all atheists. Atheism is not growing very fast. It's growing a little bit. About a quarter of the population say that they don't believe in God, that they're atheists. So spirituality isn't declining nearly as fast as saying that you are religious or that you belong to one of the traditional denominations or religions. Point three, that suggests that religion has become a toxic brand. People want to dissociate from religion even though they are interested in spirituality. Religions come to signal something authoritarian. And of course, that's exacerbated by the way in which Islam is being portrayed in this country, as well as the way in which the churches often present themselves, telling us what we should do, what we should think, what we should feel. Point four, this all sits, that way, that authoritarian mode sits very particularly uneasily with what's been happening in society here since the late 80s. Producing the graduate generations, about half of us now go to university. We're used to having voice and choice. We're increasingly highly educated. We're used to people asking, what's my opinion? So as religion has started hardening up and getting more, this is the truth, so we've been going in the opposite direction and getting more liberal and more concerned about expressing our own voice, our own choice, and participating. Participation is the name of the game in our age. So, point five. This leads to a crisis, not so much of religion in the broadest sense, but of religious authorities. It's religious leaders and religious institutions and the formal parts of religion that people don't want to swallow, don't want to identify with now, that they feel are killing the spirit, the living part of what religion should be. So final point six. I think we actually live in an era of great spiritual vitality. My, I make a living uh, at Lancaster University studying religion, and I've done that for the past 25 years, and I see a huge amount of vitality and invention and creativity and change on the ground, right across the spectrum of religions, Christian and non-Christian, uh, particularly in younger generations, of course. So there is a divorce, a tragic divorce, my sixth point, between this spiritual vitality on the ground and the institutions, the authorities of religion, those have been moving apart, whereas in my view, a healthy religious state is one in which institutions and the life, the spiritual life of people support and challenge one another. So the future is extremely open. Uh, will this divorce be healed or will those start to continue to diverge? The answer is partly up to us and what happens next. Thank you very much. <laughs>